Hello YouTube, welcome to Sunday in the Shop. This will be an experiment, so I don't want to make a regular video out, because it could end up being a fail. Can you tell this ball's broken? Look, look where the stuff is, and I'll explain it. See what that? This is broke, so I've got epoxy down in there. It's probably down in over an eighth of an inch. It might be a quarter inch. I've got a lot of epoxy in there. This is the top of an ink pen. Just a common old ink pen and the cap goes on. You can tell there was where the clip was. It probably goes down about an inch or so. Well, I filled this with hot glue. And how I did it is I had this actual roll of tape. There's a roll of tape on here, trust me. I had this wedged in with some paper towel like this. So it couldn't float. I had this down in the lid full of water, cold water. And I put the hot glue in it. Well, that's pretty... I don't know the word. You you really chance it. You're putting something hot against something cold. But I just didn't want to put put it to get the bulb hot and then it gets cold and then it breaks. Well, that was okay. But this is how I did it. I cut that off first, right? The bottom. Then I peeled that off. And I ground the glass to get the inside out where the filament is. Well, this morning I pulled this little bit of ring off. I wiggled it with my finger. This is the cement plaster stuff they put in them. Now, I got a vent fan. You don't know if that's toxic or whatever. So, wear a dust mask, all that, blah, blah, safety gear. See a little piece of glass? This is purple I made. It's dark blue with a red metallic. I didn't know if I'd get any sparkle or not. But, when I put the glue on it, if you look real carefully, watch. Can you see how it's got... Like a few defects in here. Oop, back off. But it's just going to be a tool. And like I said, we're experimenting. I'm going to try not to grind that epoxy off right there. We want to put something over top of this and glue it on here. So it's really epoxy and solid. Well, I won't shave it. I put my epoxy bottles upside down in that holder that it comes with. Forgot about it for a couple days, and some of it dripped out, so I'm really low on it now. So, I'm glad I had some left. I made, I did that when I was working, you know, so like when I wanted to grab it, it was ready to squeeze out. Don't store it upside down. This is an intermediate base. Now, I don't know what that is. Because I remember the big old Christmas light bulbs. Right? That's how big it is where it screws in. I just don't remember being that big. It's some kind of appliance bulb. We can turn this around. Now I say I don't get paid to show anything, and this video is not monetized. Something I found at a dollar store. So it could have went in a microwave, a refrigerator, or something. It's just not your common size or the little. Uh, it's not like the candelabra bulb. To me, that's like. Some of the nightlight balls, you know, the bases. Anyway, get rid of that. Okay. We're going to come back and find something to put on this. Now, I'm going to put a video on her making an eyeball, painted eyeball out of one of my small little balls and ones that are that yellowish color. You know what I mean. The Kanak or whatever. So, that's just going to be added on. I figured that's such a long rambling video that I got to shorten this one up. So, you're getting a video, plus Sunday in the shop video this week, so. You better be happy. <laughs> Not really that way. Yes, I am. You better be happy. You better be happy. Take, be thankful for what you got. Oh, no lectures here. Yeah, that didn't show up till this morning. Last night, you didn't see that. I had a little bit of discoloration from the glue hitting the paint, but... This reminds me of the great bubble gum when I was a kid. They come in a round little ball, smaller than this. And the sour apple ones are yellow with red speckles. And I'd like to to imitate that. You can get speckles by putting paint on a brush and taking your finger and flicking it like this. So it goes, and it splatters off. Or be way far away in the spray can, my brother taught me this, but and spray a long ways away. So little speckles drop on what you're doing. So practice it. Grab me some old paint you don't even care about. And get you some cardboard, like say paint it white. And stand way back. 
and spray some paint and let it fall. Let it dust on there and see what kind of sprinkles you get. If you want some speckled look. Uh, you know that paint goes in chunk of cars and violas made back in the 60s? That gray speckled paint, there's a trick to that. Is when you got about a half can of white, half can of black, uh, what you do is you paint the trunk with gray primer, right? Then you turn the can upside down and get rid of almost all the air. So, you know what it is? You ever have a can running out of air with suds and paint and go and splatter? That's how you make your own splatter paint. Just run run the can almost out of air and keep checking it until it just splatters. And you can imitate that splatter paint in the trunk of a car. There you go. Don't think them body shop used car guys didn't do that trick because that's where I learned it from. Look at that brand new trunk. Never been rusted. Yeah, right. The scams they pulled when I was a kid with the Bondo shops. But on the daily driver, who cared? I'd still do it. I'd Bondo up some old car. and I don't care if it's a half inch stick. I'd still Bondo it and drive it. It's just a car, people. It's not going to the auction to be auctioned for 50000 Anyway, this is way too long. We'll come back when we've got something figured out on this. And I did take a picture of this before I put the pox in it so you can see how broke it was. Stay tuned. Okay, trust me, this fits. I can't do it. I only got one hand. I ground and dremeled that down. Remember, some of this is epoxy right up to the glass. It's not over top of that yellow powdery stuff. But I'll take a picture of it. So hold on, and I'll even include it right here. I'll bring back a little clip. I'll put it on there. See? It fits. Now we're going to make a hole for our little scratch-all rod to come through. This will just have to be painted. Because we're going to epoxy on there with a lot of epoxy. Uh, our rod will do that thing. Leaves our rod small. You know I wrapped the electrical tape around the rod so it makes up the space of the tube. So it don't wobble. We'll do that down to the bottom and then part way up. Well, probably right towards the top right there. So that'll keep the rod from wobbling. So I'll have a picture of that too when I wrap the stuff around it. Okay, if it'll focus. Okay, here's the setup. We got a wooden dowel in there that takes up not quite half of that. Got some tape wrapped around it, so we put epoxy, it's tight going down in there, okay. We've got this machine with the Dremel stuff, so it just fits into here. So that goes on there, and then a rod goes in, and this will be epoxied. This will be epoxied inside of here. This will have epoxy on it. Mostly a whole lot on the end. That way you're pushing against that wooden dowel and you use it for an awl. And you're not in this plastic, you're not pushing against the glass of the bulb. And it's not going to be used for rough service. And we're going to drill a hole in this cap. This is one of them things I showed you in a previous video. And this part will be painted. We'll do that very last. Okay, the first thing to do is to get one of these epoxied on here this. Get this epoxy in first. Uh, the cap we done last. We got to drill a hole in it. And we have a picture of what this looks like when we gutted it. We ground off the tip and then the little piece popped out with a spring and then there's a gasket. So you can see what's inside of one of these extensions. Okay, back to work. Okay, we are done with this. We got to put a point on it someday. But so I drilled through the cap. I actually used a Dremel diamond bit. A real small and then made it bigger. And I'm not happy with this gold paint. It is a new bottle. And I put a couple coats on there. And it reacted with the primer and tried pulling it up. And it's just too runny. There's too much thinner in it. I don't know. Maybe someday taking out let it set out for a few hours and evaporate some thinner out of it. There you go. Stay tuned. I'll have a video added on here where I made the eyeball shifter ball. It's a little ball that's the size of a golf ball. Pretty close. It's it's not one of my bigger knobs and yellow ones, whatever you want to call them. There you go. Thanks for watching this week. We'll see you next time.
Hello YouTube, here's looking at you. Dad jokes. Uh, these are all mush because I got a toy skull. It used to be like a strobe light and I had these crammed in the eye sockets for 20 years. So they're not round anymore. I tried heating them up in front of the heater and blowing some air in there. But it don't matter. We scrubbed this one up. Uh, this has six. See the red lines going six. I like odd numbers like seven or five. Because in nature, stuff is odd. It's not always an even number. So that's up to your decision. But we got our little ball. This one of the smaller ones. I've got it sanded with 220. I found the best I could to get to the center to where I've got the hole drilled. And these actually, when they were cured, they left like a little pimple up here. I sanded off a little bit. I put a little mark there with a sharpie where I think the middle is. But these are about the size of a golf ball. Oh, I painted golf balls. It's fun. So if you want to do this, get you a golf ball. Okay? And you got a picture to go by. Okay? Any weird how they put the air hole in here? They couldn't put it in the back. I'm going to try to make a template. I don't have no decal paper done. And I don't have a mask you tape. Something maybe out of some paper. I want this circle to be even as can be. Uh, mine's going to have little lines in it. You look at an eyeball. It's got little lines that go like this. And I don't think I'm going to have the black very wide. If I have black on it, it's going to be very, very thin. I have a brush. I can't get to it now. Uh, used for pinstriping. Maybe I can reach over here while I'm talking. We don't want this to be a long video. We're going to have to grab all the brushes. Only way to do this. Uh, this one. Now that's really not a pinstripe brush. Because if you look, the bristles are even. Focus. A pinstripe brush goes more to a point. And you watch the pinstriper guy go like this. So I do that, and I kind of get, I don't want to mess with it. Just, just a cheap set at a craft store, hobby store, wherever, not say no names. I didn't say any names now. I don't really like the big handles on them, but I get used to it. I didn't really like them at first. I've used that, but after a while, you get used to it. You know, it's about pencil size. Uh, these ends will fall off these. Just do a little bit of wood whittling and scraping and cram them on here. Don't glue them on. Just, it might break someday and you have to redo it. So don't ever glue one of these on because it's falling off. If it breaks, you can always re-whittle it or something and redo it. Yeah, so don't, don't glue that on there. Just whittle it down and get it under like this and give it a good old... You know what I mean? Okay, let's get to work. We'll come back when we figure out how we're going to make that circle up here. Whoa, I bet I can't do that again. Take two. Wow, I dropped the camera. I don't know if I'll leave that in there or not. And I'll take this long video. Simple little compass with my pencil lead. Uh, that outer circle is about seven inches. And the inner one's just a little over half inch. I like that. And if you look, can, can you see that where that's got a little bit of a peak to it? Even to get see it? I want this to look good from the side. If it's going to be like a shift now, I want you to start seeing the eyeball just a little bit. So you see what I mean? You can see that little pimple where it pops up, not perfectly round. Okay, back to work. Let's keep these clips really short. People lose interest. I've looked on my whatever analytics I, I see the watch time of my videos i mean that don't lie people watch like one minute of five minute video so i try to keep some of these short so if you want to learn your watch if you don't just look at the pictures rolling away see i'm wasting footage see we're wasting film this stuff costs money well that's two coats of flat white. It is lumpy. You're just not going to get away from it. 
not using little bitty brushes and I don't have no white spray and I wouldn't want to mix brands of paint anyway but uh, I do believe the clear coat will hide a lot of that after all it's hand painted at least you can tell that it is so we'll snap a photo of that remember that's two coats well two coats well actually three the last coat was really thin so I had a third coat was really thin paint that kind of softens your paint up and smooths it out I'd have to just show you how to do that if you don't know how okay we've got our outline this will almost this will go to a pretty fine point I'm going to get too close because it's probably not going to focus oh when you're done with your paint bottle see that circle take a rag and put it on top and wipe the top rim off because you know you're always going over here like this with your brush to get the excess off. And there's that whistle. I guess it's lunch time or lunch is over. Okay, we are done except for some clear coat. And that might be another video like Sunday in the shop. I'll show you. See where I touched that somehow? I don't know how I did it. And I'm not taking it out. Like there, that line's a little too fat. I wanted just three lines. I end up doing four. You know, four little things. See, one, two, three, two, don't touch that. Oh. See that? One, two, three, four. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. There you go. Got this so I can swivel without falling. That has 16 drives. I let that dot dry overnight. I put a little blob of paint and let it dry overnight. And where I scratched with my uh, compass with the pencil, it kind of scratched the paint. So I had like a little groove to get that little black ring around there. Don't ask me how that blue got. Up. I made this color blue purple by mixing some paint together. And I had a test sample of that old, uh, I call it lavender. I tried matching because the paint dried up. And I got close and I had a sample of it. And all you can do is just practice. That's mixing, uh, I can't tell you right. Blue and red together. It's purple. I think I'm right. I, I see how I forget. I know how to mix all the basic eight colors together. I say you just had eight colors of paint. You know, like when you mix blue and yellow makes green, and that's the basic. I used to know all that. I'm going to have to look it up and study again. But there you go. It's probably too long a video. We're out of here. Even our battery symbols flashing. So thanks for watching.